You know, I feel really bad for making this video because this is seriously the third time on the YouTube channel where we're talking about this exact thing. I have the Chara Leafs PNG file saved on my computer, and we've already used it twice. This is just going to be the third time. The first time it was a year and a bit ago talking about how fans need to stop talking about the idea of Chara to Toronto, and then we made another video talking about the rumors that popped up again, and now the third time's the charm, it's Elliot Friedman once more, giving us another reason to discuss this same idea and the same player going to the same team potentially. So. Do I feel bad for making this video? Yes, I do. Mostly because I feel like it's something that a lot of Leafs fans maybe would not want to hear, but, you know, considering their team, considering the trade deadline coming up, considering all the stuff going on in the National Hockey League with the market and the defensemen and what they could be going for, etc., etc., I do think we can have ourselves a fun conversation about this. Hopefully for the last time, like, okay, no, hopefully sounds like a bad thing because, oh, you want this guy to retire and never suit up in the NHL again, thus never giving him an opportunity to be a Toronto Maple Leafs target. Lego, you sick blank. You can fill in the blanks right there. No, that's not really what's the case here. It's just, it's such a wild idea that I don't really think we need to talk about this anymore after this, unless it actually happens, which... If that's the case, then okay, I guess we're going to talk about it a fourth time. 32 thoughts, trade deadline fallout coming fast and furious. I love that title, by the way, Elliot. Good job with that one. March 16th, 2022 is when this article was published, so the link will be in the description if you want to go ahead and read this. But on this 32 Thoughts article lies thought number five. Take a look at what Friedman has to say about Zdeno Chara and his completely insane Toronto prediction. The Maple Leafs like veterans with great attitudes. Wayne Simmons, Jason Spezza, Joe Thornton, Ron Hainsey. Obviously, Chara would have to want to do it. The Maple Leafs wouldn't mind some blue line meanness. He would qualify. There are indeed some more thoughts that he has about the Maple Leafs. He talks about Toronto GM Kyle Dubas and how he continues to indicate he does not want to trade his top prospects for a rental, and he does not want to move the team's first-round draft choice for a third time in four years. We'll see how the Sherratt deal adjusts the market, yada yada yada, Lindholm, top target, Klingberg, Giordano, Middleton, Dermot, and Hall have been in the market for months, and I wouldn't be surprised if Dermot is given a fresh start, regardless of what else happens in the next few days. He also talks about fourth-line changes, talking about the commitment to Simmons, and Spezza and all that stuff, but either way, Zdeno Chara is another name that has popped up here in the Toronto Maple Leafs would they, could they, do they want to discussion, and for Friedman to bring this guy up, it gives me one more opportunity to talk about Zdeno Chara and just the absolute monster that he is, because lo and behold, even though Chara is already 45 years old, like, my goodness, he just turned 45 yesterday. Belated happy birthday to Zdeno Chara. Can you believe this guy's 45 years old? My goodness, he's still an absolute monster. 6'9", 249. This season, he's got himself 9 points in 49 games. Played for the Islanders, he's on pace for 13 points over 73 games. Fun fact, he's also on pace for 109 penalty minutes, which would be, no, that wouldn't be a career high. That would be his third most, actually, no, he's got a whole bunch more days back in in the early 2000s and late 90s where he had a lot more. So I stand corrected. He actually had a lot more penalty minutes back then. But either way, when you think about Zdeno Chara, I think a lot of people in my generation, because I was born in the year 2000, I saw the Bruins win the Stanley Cup. I saw the Bruins eliminate the Toronto Maple Leafs. I saw the Bruins do all this crazy stuff in the 2010s. My version of Zdeno Chara in my mind's eye is always Boston, Boston, Boston. I wasn't around for the other half of his career where he spent it in New York and Ottawa and then eventually in other teams, but you take a look at Washington, you take a look at New York, these are two brand new chapters in Zdeno Chara's hockey life, and he's been a pretty stable guy. I mean, sure, a lot of Islanders fans would go out there and complain about Chara and the way that he's played this season, but... I mean, the guy's 44, 45 years old. The Islanders are not really that great of a team this season, so I don't really think that Zdeno Chara is the biggest guy to blame when it comes to the Islanders and their woes in 21-22. 
Could Zidane Chara be a defenseman that the Toronto Maple Leafs could use? I mean, you tell me. He's going out there making $750,000 this season. He is not going to be a rental guy in the sense that, okay, you're going to have to get the firsts and the top prospects going out there. This is not a Nick Foligno type of situation. You want to talk about rentals and Kyle Dubas not wanting to shell out top guys or not wanting to shell out his first round pick. I do think that Zidane Chara could be a little bit more on the cheaper side when it comes to negotiating with the New York Islanders. And, I mean, who knows if Lou Lamorello is really going to go out there and want to help out the former squad that he was a part of in Toronto. Furthermore, you have yourselves a conversation to be having about Toronto and defense as a whole. Now, I don't want to make it seem like goaltending is not an issue anymore. Like, oh, all right, Eric Shelgren is here and he is perfect. He is going to be the guy going forward, Jack Campbell, who... Because, of course, Campbell is still going to come back, yada, yada, yada. You still do have Mrazek in the system, but I do think that Mrazek is likely not going to see himself any playoff action once the 2022 playoffs begin, no matter how bad Jack Campbell is, because Shelgren, I believe, is just going to be the de facto backup at this point. But either way, when it comes to defense... It's been no secret that the Toronto defense has not really been as good as you would want it to be over the past few, let's say, weeks, just to throw a time span out there. As Friedman pointed out straight up, there are guys like Klingberg, there are guys like Giordano, there are guys like Hampus Lindholm, whom the Toronto Maple Leafs have indeed expressed interest in. There was that entire Josh Manson thing that was believed to have not seen Manson waive his no-trade clause to the Toronto Maple Leafs, so there you go, there's some guy that apparently does not want to play for your team. But for Zdeno Chara to come into these conversations as well, it is kind of interesting to me because he does have no trade protection, or excuse me, yeah, no, that is correct, right? No trade protection. If he had a trade clause, there would have been a no trade clause in there. Exactly. That's exactly what I'm trying to say. Pretty much, he can get traded whenever the Islanders want him to get traded, and he has no say in whether or not he goes or stays. Of course, you know, the Islanders wouldn't do that straight up. They'd probably let him know, and they'd probably be like, okay, here, we have options. We've got teams that are calling about you. Where would you want to go? Because Zdeno Chara is 45 freaking years old. You don't treat this guy like any other random Joe that just gets sent wherever because... This guy's a legend in the game. He's a really big one, figuratively and literally speaking, too. It's just, if you really want yourself some grit, some defensive stability, a guy who could probably play some, let's say, extended minutes in the defensive zone so you don't overwork some of the other guys that you have on your blue line, Zidane Ochara, to me, does indeed have the amount of maturity to be able to go out there and exhibit those skills. Will he be an important number one guy in Toronto should he come over to the Leafs? Probably not, right? Like, he's not going to be the number one most relied upon guy. He'll just probably be given the same role that players like Spezza and Simmons and Marlowe and all of them had. Okay, maybe not Marlowe. That's not a good example because he was very well used by Mike Babcock, oddly enough. But either way, all the players on this Toronto Maple Leaf squad that would have themselves the potential of wearing a letter, of course you have the four-headed monster on top of your forward core, Matthews, Marner, Nylander, Tavares, and then you have the defenseman, Morgan Riley out there, Jake Monson when he comes back, and then throughout the lineup you have yourselves other depth players that have shown themselves off as useful pieces. Spezza seems to score every time I watch the Toronto Maple Leafs play. The Wayne Train is still going out there doing his thing, and and if Zdeno Chara gets added onto this team, of course, you know, the average age would probably go up by a magnitude of the highest that it's ever gone up. So let me know in the comments if you're a Toronto Maple Leafs fan, what do you think about the idea of Zdeno Chara being the guy to come over to your squad? Do you like this idea? Do you like the mythos of having a New York guy to an Ottawa guy to a Boston guy for pretty much the entirety of my familiarity, personally speaking, of Zdeno Chara in the NHL? Heading over to a Toronto team after shattering the hearts of many Leafs fans over the past decade. What do you think about this idea? Do you think Friedman has himself a conversation here or what? If you do trade with the New York Islanders for Zidane Char, what is it that you want to give up? What is the most that you would be willing to give up? And if you are a New York Islanders fan, what would you want in return for Zidane Chara? Let me know in the comments all your thoughts and opinions. I hope you enjoyed this Vrijaj Rolls 99. And... Bye.